أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وافتح علينا بمعرفة العلم وسهل أخلاقنا بالحلم وجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم آمين uh, Welcome back إن شاء الله we uh, I'd like to, before we start today's uh, uh, section, um, there was a comment that was uh, uh, when talking about harf al ra and harf al lam, uh, we did mention that one of its attributes, we will talk about that later inshallah, but uh, that it was al inhiraf, which is deviation. Um, uh, for the record, the book that Carol uh, wrote, the book that we use, is actually, uh, <laughs> she actually indicates that it's the deviation of the sound and not the deviation of the tongue. That's the same um, uh, opinion of, of uh, Sheikh Ayman al Sweed that it's deviation of the sound. Now, when those that transcribed his, his uh, slides and so on, when they transcribed it, they wrote it as it's deviation of the tongue. So I thought, and, and I went by the transcription, so I thought it was so when Rahima mentioned it, I went to check on what he said. He actually said it's deviation of the sound <coughs> and not the deviation of the tongue. But then I, I, you know, I wanted to kind of um, see why, why would people think that it's deviation of the tongue. So I came, uh, I, I read multiple online references. They indicate it's the deviation of the tongue for both la and, ra, uh, and uh, lam and ra. Including this book, Ghayat al-Murid fi ilm al-Tajweed. Uh, he says here, this writer, Al-Inhiraf wa ma'anah al-mayl wal-udul. The Al-Inhiraf meaning of it is deviation. And then he defines and he, and he says, Wastilahan, in terms of definition, Al-mayl bil harf. It's the deviation of the letter, Al-mayl bil harf, ba'da khurujihi min makhrajihi inda nutq bihi, hatta yattasila bi makhrajin akhar. So it's, it's the, that, that dev deviation of the position of the from the original position of the of the makhraj of the letter to a different a, a slightly different uh, deviated position so just you know part of what we do here is alhamdulillah we have people that also have some background so when they bring this up it's important for us to go and and do some references so that is a, a certainly a valid um, opinion in terms of practical aspect of it the, 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 as long as the sound is, is coming right, inshallah Azza wa Jal, whether you slightly deviate the tongue or allow the sound uh, to actually be coming from the side. So when you say al, 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 as long as the sound comes from the side, that's what Ayman al Suwaid is referring to, while these authors here are referring to the actual deviation of the tongue, al, slightly deviating the tongue so that the sound comes on the side of the tongue. So they both end up giving you the same kind of uh, the sound being on the side of the tongue. So I just wanted to kind of put that here for the record inshallah Azza wa Jal. Now we talked about uh, what was the hukm that we talked about last time? What were the uh, the letter which is Nun Sakina, right? Nun Sakina or what we call Tanween, this here. And we said that the uh, ahkam for this are what was the first type? Ivhar. Uh, let's start with Ivhar. Right? Ivhar. Um, and so we said that the letters for these are? Which, which are? Al Hamza. And Ha. Ain. The one without the dot. Ha. And then the one with the dot. Ghain. And then the one with the dot. Ghain and Kha. These are the letters of the throat to begin with. They originate all of them f going from deep all the way up from the deepest ha, a, and ah and then ah and ah and then aw and ah coming up. So these are the four. So whenever we have a noon sakina that is um, that is followed by these letters, then the noon sakina has to have ilhar. And ظهار here means that it has to go completely in its articulation point. And the articulation point for it is to say an, an, an. Okay, so good. So that's ظهار. And then we talked about the second one, which was 
idgham. Okay? And idhar, by the way, means literally, it means in, in English, making it apparent, right? Saying the noon from its makhraj, proper makhraj. Idgham is merging. And so we said the letters of idgham are yar malun. And then we said that Yarmaloon is divided into two, which is really the reason why Idgham is divided into two types. One of them is with Ghunna, and one of them is without uh, Ghunna. Okay, with Ghunna, these are which letters? Yenmu, very good. Yenmu. And then, which means that yen mu is gone, so lam and ra is, is, uh, are left, so the lam and the ra would be without the ghunna. Okay? So this is kind of where we left off. And then now, today, inshallah, uh, we go into the first, the third type, which is, it's called, let's do the one before the ikhfa, let's do what's called the iqlab. Because the ikhfa will take us quite some time. Iqlab is again when you have noon sakina or tanween followed by ba. Just the letter ba. So if I have this letter here, which is ba, uh, that follows the noon, the way I say it, and this is where we go, inshallah, azzawajal, into some of these conditions that are related to, to ikhfa, to iqlab. The way I say this, is I actually, what does iqlab mean? Just literally. What is, what is iqlab? You flip it. You transform it. Right? You convert it. You convert this letter into apparently something else. Okay? So it's basically what we have is the rule is on the noon. So we, we, whenever we have a tanween or a noon that comes with the, with the ba, we're going to convert that noon sakina or the tanween which we said that in, in essence, it's like a noon sakina. So we're going to convert this noon sakina or the tanween from a noon into, this is where the, the conversion is into a meme. So the noon basically, this noon here or the tanween, these will be converted into a meme. Okay. So that's how we will, we will approach this. So for example, the, you know, uh, if we have this, just as an example, the word min, and then we have ba'd. Now it's, it's supposed to be min ba'd, right? That's, if we were not transforming it, if we were just saying, we would say min ba'd. But we don't say min ba'd. We have to change this into a meme. Noon makhraj is here. An, an. Well now, meme we know the makhraj is am, am, it's the lips. So we have to convert that noon into a meme and so this will be now, the way it's going to be kind of read for practical purposes is going to be something like this. Mim ba'd. Kind of thing. We're going to read it as mim ba'd. Okay, so that's how we will we'll approach this. Now, when we do this, and this is again, you know, uh, the, the way the uh, Sahaba learned this from the Prophet ﷺ was not through rules of tajweed. And this is where, you know, the more detail that we go into, we start to realize why there are differences among scholars on, even as we saw in, when it comes to inhiraf uh, earlier, the deviation of the, of, of the tongue or the sound. And now even when it comes to this, the application of this, you're going to see why there is a, a you know, a legitimate difference of opinion how to actually approach this. The simplest kind of a straightforward approach for this as long as you follow conditions. The condition is you're going to move from the makhraj of the noon to the makhraj of the meme. So the simplest condition is to say meme. Okay, so that's what you will do. Clearly when you do meme, one of the attributes of meme is that it has a ghunna. So you're going to have to say with ghunna. So you're not going to say simply mim ba'd. You're going to say mim ba'd. So that's one opinion is simply to take it and just convert this into a meme and make it act like a meme. 
transform it simply uh, straightforward like a meme. And so you would say mimbad, mimbad. The whole sound will come purely from the nose because this whole thing is sealed now. The mouth is sealed. Mimbad, mimbad. Okay. So that's one way. Well, another example maybe even when Allah subhanahu wa taala says layun. The word would actually say layun badanna, right? Layun badanna. But layun. So let's see how it's going to be written. If we were to write this, we're going to say la yun ba dhanna. Okay, so la yun ba dhanna. Okay. So you notice here nun sakina followed by a ba. So when we come to read this in the, in the Quran, it's written as nun, but then in terms of application, we will convert this, and so you will see like a small meme that's being created. And so to indicate to you that there is an aqlab. So you would say, layum badanna, layum badanna. Proper sealing of the mouth. Now, there are others that would, that would come and say, and this is again, you know, the uh, uh, opinion of uh, Imam. This, this is a very, very uh, great scholar that wrote this book, Ghayat al murid fi Ilm al-Tajweed, a very, very good uh, reference, Atiyah Qabil Nasr. And he actually mentions here and says that when you do this, uh, and, and, and this is by the, a, a lot of the Egyptian, the Egyptian background of Tajweed, they will do it not like this. They wouldn't convert it complete transformation into a meme. So they wouldn't say, Mimbad, they wouldn't do that. And so he actually, uh, this, this Imam, he actually gives the, uh, ref refers to the uh, great scholar Al, -Al Jamzuri. Al the Sheikh Al Jamzuri was one of the great scholars in Tajweed in our history. So he refers actually to a poem that he mentioned and he says, وَالثَّالِثُ The third rule of Nun Sakina in Tanween. وَالثَّالِثُ الْإِقْلَابُ عِنْدَ الْبَاءِ That you do iqlab when, when a Nun is or a Tanween is followed by a ba. وَالثَّالِثُ الْإِقْلَابُ عِنْدَ الْبَاءِ مِيمًا So you will convert it to a meme. مِيمًا بِغُنَّةٍ With a ghunna. And that's how we start earlier with two conditions. But then he says مَعَ الْإِخْفَاءِ With إِخْفَاء So how would you add, and we haven't talked about إِخْفَاء But one of the things you notice with إِخْفَاء إِخْفَاء means literally to hide, to seal something. Okay, or, or to conceal it, to hide it. That's إِخْفَاء so in other words, when you do ikhfa, and we'll talk about that today in detail, probably the whole session will go just into ikhfa today, if not uh, even more. So when we do ikhfa, what it means is you're going to approach the articulation letter, the articulation point of the letter to come, in this case the letter to come is a meme. But you're not going to close it completely. You're going to be so close to it, but not close it. So in other words, when you come to say it, you will say, instead of saying you don't want to say there are some scholars, there are some it's wrong. That is completely wrong. It's, this is not saying that's wrong. But simply to say you see that small little thing, you're almost approaching you're almost, appro almost approaching the two lips closing to each other. But you're not going to close it because it says ma'al ikhfa'i. Meeman bighunnatin ma'al ikhfa'i. So you want to make sure that the sound is not only here but that there is a ghunna to it. But also you're almost closing. Almost. Min ba'd. Min ba'd. So there's some from min, min. And even uh, Sheikh Ayman Suid he says this. You have to have that ghunna in there. Both of, all of them agree on the ghunna portion of it. All of them agree that they go into a meme, all of, uh, but not all of them agree on whether there is an ikhfa to it or not. So in Al-Iqlab, with uh, Sheikh Zamjuri, uh, what he says is, you do it with the ikhfa portion to it. Modern scholars today, majority of them, they read with the, this opinion that it does not mean mil ba'd. That's the majority. majority of scho modern scholars. It's a little bit of uh, it's very little opening. Yeah, you refer to the old scholars, some of that that have written. And Sheikh Ayman is an old school type of guy. Uh, Ayman is Sweet. What did you call it? The, the, it's called the meme 
Yes, yes. That there is an ikhfa to it. Ikhfa means that you're not going to completely close. Ikhfa means you're going to approach that, but not completely close, close, uh, closing on, on the articulation point. Is this clear? I mean, this, you know, you're, you're going to hear a number of Qurra, and now when you listen to even some of the great scholars, uh, Qurra, listen to this. Whether they do mim or mim, very small little opening. If you see somebody doing mim, that's wrong. Here we're not talking about mim bad. It sounds the same, but it's not. It's if you're going to do proper ikhfa, which we'll talk about in detail today, you have to come as close as possible to the articulation point. That's what ikhfa is by definition. Okay, and on that, on ikhfa of what ikhfa is, even Sheikh Ayman Swaid agrees hundred percent on on this aspect of it. Okay, it's whether ikhfa includes is included in this or not is where the difference is. Okay, any question on this? Okay, now that we have hopefully, um, you know, clarified this, so I'm gonna kind of use this. These, these are mashallah, we have nice audio visual today. The word ambiya. Okay, so we're gonna kind of rotate this on the word Anbiya. Okay, let's start with. تفضل يا حبيبي. Anbiya. أيوة. With proper تجويد. Anbiya. جميل. Again. Anbiya. حلو. Anbiya. Anbiya. جميل. What I notice is the غنّة is almost not there. So you did it from here very nicely. But the ghunna is almost not there. So you want to get a little bit of that ghunna. Anbiya. Anbiya. So both. Anbiya. Anbiya. Jameel. Much better. Much better. Taib. Uthman. Ma'alish. Come back. Come back to you. Come back to you. Akhut mana. ما شاء الله جيد والله very very good ما شاء الله سر أجارة pass pass okay ما شاء الله a lot of pass today you if you wanna close it by the way I'm not saying you go with one or the other whichever but I assumed you're closing it completely if it is alhamdulillah it's good طيب ما شاء الله you can pick one yeah you can pick one yeah, you can. Yeah, now go back. <laughs> there you go. I see. Ambiya. Yeah, but uh, w with a gunna. Ambiya. There you go. Ambiya. If you're gonna go with it. Ambiya. Ambiya. Very good. Ambiya. I'm assuming closing. Ambiya. It's easier, isn't it? It's much easier. Yeah, of course. Ambiya. Okay. Mashallah. Uh, now. It's up to you. You tell me, and then we go from there. Mashallah, <laughs> alik. This is the uh, opening one. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Hassan. Mashallah, <laughs> almost closing, right? Almost. Very good. But, Very good. Uh, just a quick question, Dona, on the um, Shatabiya, the you know Hafs on Asim on Shatabiya. There's so under there. There's two. Yeah, I'll, that I'll have to check. Oh. Very good. Very good. That I'll have to check. Okay. Good question. I don't wanna. Okay. I know for what Sheikh Ayman al Swaid, part of it is what he does is under a Shatabiyya. Okay. But is the other one, this modern uh, scholars want to adhere to, is it part of a Shatabiyya? Oh, okay. I have to check on that. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. I think I missed it. What is the. One versus the other. Why? Why? Oh, it's they okay. So it's both of them is when you have mim nun sakina or tanween followed by a ba. So why um versus un the other way? It's it's a different recitation, different ways of recitation. And some of them they they notice that you know, and it's again it's after the math. This is not how the Prophet ﷺ told us do like this with with. It's some of the scholars when they saw that the. Recitations are becoming different, so they refer to some major qurra like Hafs, like An Asim, and and so they looked at them and they so based on their recitation, so Hafs An Asim looked at an, a number of other scholars, and so they started to document how true reciters would actually recite, 
and so some of them they s so is it really closing it in is it completely sealing it in differences of opinion on that yes and I think that, that's part of, you know, when we have these kind of ad, uh, advanced kind of tajweed thing that we do, is part of it is for us to realize that there are some differences out there. Just like fiqh, just like all sorts of things that are out there, that are not based on clear ayah or hadith or something like that. Do this kind of, you, you're going to see some, some, of the, some of the difference. But for the vast majority, as you see, these are very set kind of rules that we're talking about. طيب, uh, another one. Then maybe I'll, I'll pick some of these and then you, you tell me. The word وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلَ أُخَتْ uh, مُنَا جميل. This is the not closing, شوية opening. Very good. Very good. ما شاء الله. جميل جميل. Uh, يُمْبِتُ يُمْبِتُ شَمْشَن يُمْبِتُ Very good. Yeah. يُمْبِتُ The way you said it, right? With closing. Let me try the other yeah. one. MashaAllah, very good, very good, very good. I think uh, the, uh, the message is, is, is clear. طيب, بثمانين بخس. MashaAllah, جميل. طيرم بإذني, طيرم بإذني, حسام. طيرم بإذني. بإذني. أيوه. Just if you're gonna open it, make it a little bit. Okay, okay. طيرا بإذني. طيرا بإذني. جميل جميل. Uh, is, is, is this good? Uh, how about في another word? في سنبلة في سنبلة أجارة. ما شاء الله. Another one. أمبوريكا. أم أمبوريكا. Okay, first one, right? Without closing yeah. completely. Very good. Good try. Very good. MashaAllah. Anburika. Anburika. Okay, very good. Very good. That's iqlab. Now, this is the difficult one. The fourth one is, and this is where, you know, and this is quite difficult. So, w when it comes to application, the idea of it is actually simple. But the application of it is because it's different from one letter to another. It, it becomes quite challenging. So we're going to go into this. Ikhfa. So we've covered basically Hamza and Ha, Ain and Ha, Ghain and Kha, six of them. And then we covered Yarmaloon, another six, that's 12. We covered Ba, that gives us 13. There are 28 total that we have, so we're left with 15. 15 letters, where if it's a Noon Sakina, or a tanween that's followed by uh, these 15. And by the way, I don't know if you've, some of you might have memorized this, but uh, t these tanween people, they like uh, a lot of uh, mnemonics to memorize things. Sif dha thana, kam jada shakhsan qad sama, dum tayyiban, zid fi tuqa, ba'd walima. It's what all, of, they've put all of this to pick the first letter of what I just said. So for example, sif dha thana, it's sad. The thana, the thana, tha, and so on. <laughs> you know, so to pick the first letter of this entire um, kind of uh, poem that they have put. Um, so when a nun sakina or a tanween is followed by any one of these, you're gonna do ikhfa. What is ikhfa? The conditions that we kind of uh, mentioned before. Ikhfa is when the when you're articulating that noon you watch for the letter that is to come after it you hide the noon behind that letter so how do you hide it how do you hide how do you conceal it underneath kind of this letter well you come as close as possible to the articulation point of the letter to come as close as possible but you never get there so you're hiding it and so you're approaching, you're, you're coming to that letter and you're just almost hitting the articulation point but you're not getting there. And so by doing that, you're actually doing ikhfa. In doing ikhfa, you have to have a ghunna. You have to have a ghunna. Part of ikhfa is ghunna. Because, why? Because part of a noon is, noon always comes with a ghunna. Always. Okay, so you have noon sakina or tanween which always comes with a ghunna. It's followed by these letters that you have to hide it under, underneath them or conceal it with, under those letters. That's when the ikhfa occurs. Sounds kind of logical, um, uh, you know, in theory, easy. What would happen is, for practical purposes, 
<coughs> because you're going to approach the articulation point or the makhraj of the letter to come, well, these letters, these 15 letters that we'll talk about, they have different makharaj, different articulation points. And so some of them come from the middle, like a jim is the middle of the tongue. And then you have other letters that are from the tip of the tongue. And so based on, because you're going to have to take this noon or tanween to these different locations, they're going to end up giving you different sounds. Your challenge and my challenge in tajweed beyond the science, the science is this, is the art of Tajweed, is how close can you come to the articulation point without touching it? <laughs> that is the, this is a fascinating portion of Tajweed. How close can you train yourself to come to the articulation point without really touching it for just a moment to make sure that there is ikhfa? That's a very, very difficult thing to do when it comes to practice. Oh, Absolutely, absolutely. The closer you get to the makhraj without hearing it, without hearing it, the closer you get, the better. You, so you can see clearly, clearly, without even you know going and evaluating some of these reciters, without any question, not all reciters are going to be of the same quality, clearly. Because some of them are going to get close, some of them are close but not really. Some of them are going to be off. May, uh, there are others that they will give you ikhfa, all ikhfa to be the same sound. Well, qaf is somewhere, and then you have, you know, ba is, is some, how, how could you, <laughs> you can't give them the same sound. You can't. So that's where the, the difficulty comes. Uh, for many qurra, majority of their time in training goes into this. Because this is the art of Tajweed. This is really, the, the science of it is, is uh, relatively easy, but, but when you come to practice, it becomes difficult. Okay, so I have a question. So you yes. I'm Five sorry? The, there are 15 of them. them. You never hit the articulation point for them until, uh, until, until the end of this, and then you, you hit it. Oh, so, so it it, yeah, yeah. So, for example, let me just pick one, one letter. The word min sharri, min sharri, you know, in in in, in Surah Al Falaq, Surah Al Nas, min shar. This is min nun sakina followed by a sheen with a with a fatha. It's a sheen. So nun sakina followed by a sheen. This we know is ikhfa. Okay, okay. So now in eventually I'm gonna hit the sha. Eventually you're gonna hit it. But be, before doing that, you have to do some ikhfa portion. So to just say min sharr is unacceptable because you're, you're almost assuming this is ilhar. So if I say min sharri, min sharri, that's almost doing ilhar. And it's not uh, merging. So I can, I can say min sharri, you, can, you can't do that. You can't do idgham, you can't do merging. You can't merge uh, the, the, the meme with the she. Mish, mish, you can't do that. So you have to give it ikhfa. Okay? It's not iqlab because you're not going to change it to a meme. It's not, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not a ba. So the fact that it's one of the 15, then, then you have to come close to the sheen. Well, going back to the sheen. Sheen makhraj is the middle of the tongue approaching the roof of the mouth. Ash, ash, middle of the tongue. Put that middle of the tongue up. Ash, ash. Ash. So when I come to this, then I would say, Mish, 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 Mish. That's very different than saying, Miyoko, Miyoko. It's different than Mish, Mish. See those two, just two letters. Okay, and there's a difference. And you can, there are 15 of these. Okay. Some of them are going to be, and, and later on, when the whole thing comes together, you're going to see the differences. There are letters that we say are elevated letters, and there are letters that we say that are relatively lower. When you do those with the ikhfa portion to it, because uh, elevation has some kind of attribute to it, then you're going to see that this whole thing really becomes very obvious and very kind of distinctive that to, to actually apply them. So I have a numerous of these. So I want to start kind of with the word sa. There are three examples that we have here, 
and I want to kind of make sure we hear each other. So some of you might get it right away, others might take you weeks. You know, there are some of these that might take a very long time. I know some of you have been working with, it takes, some of these take a very long time to get, kind of, to get used to it. So let's go ahead and start with the word Saad. Saad. The word Ansara. Ansara. Now I, I try to remember, sa, Saad is the tip of the tongue coming to the lower part of this. And if you happen to get Saad sounding like a Saad before, well, now this is, a, this is where the challenge is. Because if you are doing it wrong, now when you do your ikhfa, when you're not really hearing it, but you're coming as close as possible to it. Where if you're off and you're getting as close as possible to something off, I'm going to detect it now. Because <laughs> some people do seen, for example, by doing it from the top. So they will say, as, and it's as if doing it from the top of the, this teeth and not the bottom. It's supposed to be the lower. It's supposed to be as, as. So when I do a, a nikhfa with a scene, it's going to show up. Because you're going to spend some time that I hear you carefully on, on that. You're hiding it behind that line. Okay, so let's do the practice part of it. Saad, the word ansara. Okay, somebody wants to start? Uthman. Ansara. Allah iftah alayk. Ans, ans. Tongue down. Ans, ans, ansara. MashaAllah, Allah, beautiful. Again? Again, معلش. Allah iftah alik. Whoa, I'm impressed. <laughs> Very good. Very good. And you see the key part to it is, if you, let's say, read a tarawih, lead a salah or so, and I'm listening to you, <coughs> when you're doing ikhfa, so by, so by doing aws, aw, the moment you say aw, I should know that a saad is coming. That's the chat. If I know that a saad is coming when you're doing your ikhfa, then you're doing it right. Then if I know that when you're doing mish, mish, then I, the moment you say mish, knowing that a sheen is coming, then you're good. And that's where the differences are going to be. Some of these, even myself, I'm struck, you know, I'm learning them. And uh, perfect, perfection here is what Sister Muna mentioned. Many of us, we understand and we know of them, but can I, how close can I come? Keep coming close and close and without really touching it. That's where, where the practice comes. Over time, shall we develop this. Faraj, this is all new to you, huh? Sorry. طيب. ولا من صبرة. ولا من صبرة. ولا من صبرة. الله يفتح عليك. جميل والله. فيرج الطارق. ولا من صبرة. ما شاء الله. نزل هذه. تنج تذلو. ولا ماوس. ولا ماوس. Allah iftah alayk. Wow, beautiful, mashaAllah. Ansara again. Ansara. <laughs> mashaAllah, good, again. Ansara. MashaAllah, another one. Amalan saliha, Salma. Amalan saliha. La, ma'alish, come on. Amalan Jameel, very good, wallahi. Very, very good. Very good. Sana, amalan saliha. Very good, but the ha, what's wrong? Come on, again. So, <laughs> there you go. Oh, wow, mashallah, Sana, I'm impressed. Very good. Kalimat uh, Ansara. Oh, beautiful. Sir <laughs> Ajara, Ansara again. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. But better your side is very, very good. Amalan uh, Salih. You want to try? Amalan Salih. Oh, MashaAllah. Oh, no, no. I'm going to challenge you. You're good. That's good. طيب. That's a Saad. Okay. So that's the. Oh, ayu, ayu. طيب. أعطينا حتى ثلاثة مع بعض. Ansara. Ansara. جميل. بس نزل ال. 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 Your. Your. شوية elevated عندك ال. نزلي الصاد هنا أنصا أنصا جميل الله يفتح عليك ولا من صبر ولا ما شاء الله عملا صالحا لا لا هذه عملا صا 
there you go, mashallah. You can see this now how challenging it, it gets. Because when in the qira'ah, it's difficult. Now you know the side is coming and so you're putting your head to it. But when a lot of things are going on with all the tajweed, then it becomes very challenging. Asad, Asad huwa al tip of the tongue ala had al usul al asnan hina. The the lower part of the teeth. Okay? As and, and you should you should feel it. It should be there. It shouldn't be hanging. Don't let it hang. It should be down there. Als Al Very good. MashaAllah. Jameel wallahi. I'm very, very impressed. The word, yes. Uh, just to clarify, so for the sword, the tongue has to be in the bottom and the tip should be touching the bottom of the tip. Yes, oh. yes, very good, absolutely. Um, the word, the, 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 what's the makhraj of the, the, now let's do, this is almost refreshing here. The, what's the makhraj? The tip with the, yeah, the two tips, right? As Imam al-Jazri says, it's the two tips. The tip of the tongue with the tip of the, teeth here and so the support what Shamshad mentioned to us is that the bottom would help it to fixate it the tip okay don't let the tongue come out a lot very good yeah there you go Sana mashallah very good so now when you do ikhfa you're gonna have to come very close to it without doing the uh, portion. <laughs> the word liyunthira. Liyunthira. Okay. Somebody want to take the first challenge? Oh, 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 Hafsa, I didn't even ask you today. Okay. Well, I'll come back to you. Okay. Liyunthira. Liyunthira. MashaAllah. Impressive, very good. Akhatmuna. <laughs> MashaAllah. Very good, Hassam. Masha Allah. Jameel. Uthman. <laughs>